Welcome to Investors Insight, where today's topic is unique market connections. So Ty, Trey, and I all have three unique items that we're discussing, but they're all connected. So let's get started. Trey, last week, uh, we got an update on inflation. And while the, the top line number seemed to be good, the devils are always in the details. So talk about that. Yeah, thanks, Bobby. So yeah, the top line inflation over 3% came in better than expected, and it's definitely going in the right direction. And what's also important is this is the one-year anniversary of where inflation peaked last year as high as 9%. Now, this isn't uh, this is building. This is a year-over-year number, so that 3% is 3% off of that 9 But still, that's a far, that's a far cry for 9 and a fast move in just 12 months, move from 9% inflation down to 3 So whatever the Fed is doing is definitely seems to be having an effect on inflation. The challenge, though, is if you dig in under the numbers, core inflation is stubbornly still near 5%. So what's the difference between core and headline? The main difference is in this in this print is energy. Energy year over year transportation costs are down 4.67%. That's that's the big driver in the top line number being so much lower. The risk there is though if you look forward and more recently, energy prices have started to move higher and the month over month energy is actually a boost to recent inflation. So this may be a discount that's not that's not being considered going forward. And that may explain another phenomenon that we noticed, where if you look at yields, the uh, while CPI has come down, this chart shows CPI over the last few years has come down considerably, again, from nine to three. The 10-year treasury, which rose with CPI, has stayed stubbornly flat in the in the four in four percent range. So it doesn't look like the bond market is pricing in this continued drop in inflation. And in fact, it may be pricing in future higher inflation, which is concerning because if you look back into the 1970s, you can see here where CPI went up and came down, but then went back up again. At the same time, the 10-year yield never came back down. It actually continually rose through that, predicting the future hikes and in inflation. So the market right now is really positive on this low print, but it's kind of concerning to see that the, that the bond market is not really expecting that low print to, to stay. And we may see higher inflation from here, which is a bit concerning. Likely why, even though these, these numbers are coming in well below expectations, the market still expects the Fed to raise interest rates at their next meeting in, in late July. So that which could be concerning to equity markets if that does come to fruition. So a lot of data here. Another interesting topic we've noticed is we've seen import prices come down, which has also helped prices. It appears that we may be importing deflation from China, uh, which is a surprise and something we haven't seen in, in many years. So, you know, there's a lot of global connections to these numbers. Yeah, Trey, and I want to talk about on the international story here. So as investment managers, we look at a lot of data and potential market moving events. So look, it's no secret that it's a global economy and global markets. So we look at domestic, like Trey talked about, a domestic inflation. Uh, we also look at international events that could affect the global markets. One thing that we've never discussed in our blog is the credit impulse indicator that comes from China. The credit impulse indicator measures the change in new credit issued, or better put, uh, a stimulus as a percentage of GDP in China. We're watching this indicator closely because, as you can see in this first chart, while the U.S. Federal Reserve is tightening liquidity, which is lowering the inflation that Trey just talked about, we're starting to see China increase liquidity. So why does this matter? Why are we watching this indicator from China? Well, it matters because historically, when China increases liquidity through stimulus, U.S. equity markets historically benefit. As you can see in this next chart, our analysis shows that if China does stimulate and the Chinese credit begins to expand, U.S. equities would likely benefit. So during periods where the credit impulse measure indicator expanded in the past, the S&P 500's median advance was 12.5%, with five out of the six periods showing positive returns. More importantly, we look at this to see what sectors would benefit the most, and as seen in this chart, energy and materials Two sectors that we like, we have liked and currently like, have historically benefited the most. We use this analysis in building our portfolio strategy. So we'll continue to follow this. But Todd, another subject here that has a unique market connection, talk about the U.S. dollar. Give us an update on the dollar. Yeah. So, you know, we've had a lot of inquiries from clients this year about the U.S. dollar and, and you know, fears that it won't become the, the reserve currency. Currently, we don't share those those fears. We will, you know, continue to monitor it. But there's not exactly a lot of alternatives out there that, that would be good right now to replace the dollar, even if the dollar does come down. 
Um, but as you see in this chart here, we do think the dollar can continue to come down. Now, you know, technical analysis isn't perfect, but as you see here, the dollar is kind of trading in a range where uh, it, it's it's been in a downtrend, it kind of consolidated, and it looks like it might be a continuation pattern to that, you know, to the downside there. And, you know, I want to keep in mind that um, while, you know, we think of the downside here, look at the run-up we had in 2022. We're, we're not close to 2021 levels yet, and there weren't nearly as many concerns about the dollar in 2021 as there are now. And so there is some room for the dollar to fall. And, you know, how does that kind of impact, you know, portfolios? Well, uh, as you see in this chart, the S&P and the dollar are almost perfectly correlated uh, to the opposite of each other. So when the dollar goes up, the S&P typically falls. And when the dollar goes down, the S&P typically rises. So a falling dollar can be, you know, while I know it has some concerns, it can be beneficial for stocks. Um, that's because there's a lot of international companies in the S&P 500. And by international, I mean, just companies that do business, you know, overseas, kind of the connection, uh, you know, that Bobby is making with China or, or, you know, any other kind of international. If our dollar is, is you know, depreciating here, or our dollar is getting weaker, um, these companies are pulling more money in uh, internationally because uh, the, the other currency is worth more. And so, you know, we've had some headwinds with a strength with a strong dollar in 2022. Um, but a weaker dollar can really open up the path for the S and P to continue to rise, possibly. Yeah. So as you can tell, you know, we're looking at inflation. We're looking at international stimulus. We're looking at how the U S dollar is impacting the markets. As always, there's a lot of unique market connections that we look at in building strategies. So. If you have any questions about anything we've discussed today or anything else, we'd love to hear from you. We hope everyone has a great week. Thanks.